Every major phase in human evolution, Artipithecus ramidus, the OG ancestor, meet Artie, your great, 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 add about a million more greats, grandparent from 5 million years ago. Tim White discovered this fossil in Ethiopia, and let me tell you, Artie had a brain the size of an orange and a jaw that stuck out like someone mid-yawn. The foramen magnum was positioned forward, meaning Artie could walk upright. But those long arms? Still perfect for climbing trees. Artie was basically doing parkour between being human and being ape. Talk about commitment issues. Australopithecus afarensis, Lucy in the sky. Fast forward to four million years ago and meet Lucy, discovered by Donald Johansson in Ethiopia. This Australopithecus afarensis had a brain still small, about 450 milliliters, roughly a Coke can, but she walked upright like she owned the savanna. Her jaw was super prognathous, basically giving major underbite energy. Long arms, heavy brow ridges, and pointed canines made her look tough. She's proof that our ancestors were out here surviving in East Africa while looking absolutely feral. Australopithecus africanus, the Tong child. Now we're talking home team. In 1924, Raymond Dart found a skull in Tong, South Africa, and named it Australopithecus africanus. This one's basically Lucy's slightly evolved cousin with a brain around 500 milliliters. Still prognathous, still got brow ridges, but the canines were getting smaller. Found at Sturkfontein too, the cradle of humankind is literally in Gauteng, people. We've been here. South Africa isn't just about biltong and borwers. We're literally where humanity started leveling up. Australopithecus sediba, the Malapa discovery. Jumped to 2008 when Lee Berger's kid literally tripped over a fossil at Malapa Cave. Enter Australopithecus sediba, about 2 million years old. Brain still small at 420 milliliters, but the face was less prognathous, basically getting a subtle glow up. Long arms, large teeth, but everything's slowly trending toward modern human vibes. This fossil is peak. We're getting there, but not quite. Sediba is that awkward phase between Australopithecus and Homo, like puberty, but for species. Homo habilis, the handy one. Around 2 million years ago, Homo habilis showed up in Tanzania when Lewis and Mary Leakey discovered the fossils. This ancestor had a 650 milliliters brain, finally some decent processing power. Less prognathous, smaller brow ridges, and human-like teeth meant they were looking more like us. The name literally means handyman because they made stone tools. Imagine going from just vibing in trees to suddenly crafting your own cutlery. The Leakeys basically said, Yep, this one's actually smart. Homo erectus, the wanderer. Homo erectus is that ancestor who said, I'm moving out, and actually did it. Eugene Du Bois found the first fossil in Java, Indonesia, then more turned up at Swartkrans in South Africa. Living between 2 million and 400,000 years ago, they had 900 milliliters brains and longer legs for traveling. They controlled fire, made better tools, and basically invented road trips. Homo erectus was done with staying in one place like some homebody Australopithecus. They had wanderlust before it was cool. Homo sapiens, that's us, baby. And finally, 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens arrived on the scene. Tim White and other researchers found fossils at Mukhapun's hut in Limpopo, Border Cave in KZN, and Blombo's Cave in the Western Cape. We came equipped with brains between 1,200 to 1,800 milliliters, no brow ridges, small teeth, and short arms. South Africa stayed winning in the evolution game. We went from climbing trees to building skyscrapers, from grunting to arguing on Twitter. Evolution really said, let's give them everything and see what happens. So next time you're stuck in traffic, just remember, your ancestors walked out of Africa on foot survived lions, invented fire, and traveled the entire planet. And somehow you're the one complaining.